Hey everyone, my next project is going to be a lithium iron phosphate battery. I did done one of these before, uh, but it's been a while and I decided I needed a second one uh, for some of my projects, uh, which includes camping. This particular battery is uh, from Heihu Garcia's website. Uh, he's a guy out in San Diego that does a lot of lithium battery repurposing, recycling, whatever you want to call it. These are A123 cells that he's put together into a nice 100 amp hour pack. And um, I'll just go over quickly some things I like to do with these batteries. Not this particular battery, but when I build these battery boxes. So um, first thing is I like to add a solar charge controller. Uh, um, just so that I don't have to remember to bring uh, a solar charge controller with me. It's with the battery in case I need it. Along the same lines, uh, I like power pole distribution blocks and I try to add these to the battery box and not have them separate uh, for the same reason. I don't, you know, sometimes I forget these things and uh, well, the actual power, um, well, the nice external power pole distribution blocks um, really had a hard time finding uh, these cheaply. The, the usual sources will charge $32, uh, maybe $40, $45 for the really nice ones. This one is set up for a DIN rail and it's like $23. And all you have to do is buy a, a box of DIN rails and I just, you know, cut them really short on my uh, miter saw. The, the wood blade goes through the aluminum just fine. So don't think you need to get a, uh, you know, metal cutting blade for those things. Uh, it goes through the aluminum like a warm knife through butter. So next item on the list is these batteries. This particular battery is capable of quite a lot of current. Typically I would put like a hundred amp uh, bus bar in there, but this is going to, this is a 150 amp bus bar. Uh, so instead of like number 10 terminals, this has got a quarter inch terminals uh, that will go um, 150 amps continuous. Uh, so let me get this out of the way. Um, how I usually get uh, the solar charging wires and whatever I'm plugging into this out of the box without opening the box is I get uh, these electrical PVC fittings um, that I can install a lock ring on. I basically drill a hole with a hole saw and I use the uh, electrical fittings for, for two reasons. Um, they come with these nice lock rings. I think that you can use them on the plumbing, plumbing fittings as well, but uh, on the plumbing fittings, they have tapered threads, which means that as you put a, a cap on, it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. And you run the risk of these things getting stuck and needing some sort of strap or wrench to get them off. Whereas the electrical threads are not tapered. And once it starts getting snug, uh, you just leave it and it pops right off. Um, so that's that. Last thing I want to talk about before I actually start doing all this work is the heating system. Uh, I guess technically, um, uh, you know, I can I can manage what I'm doing with this battery by you know bring just bring it into the house during the winter. Um, and the um, I don't have to necessarily worry about the temperature getting below freezing and damaging the battery. I, you know, I've got even got a BMS that will prevent that from happening. However, I don't like the batteries ever getting to the point where they're getting to freezing. So I like adding heat. So I don't think I've ever used these particular heating pads before, but uh, they came in a pack of five. I'm only gonna use four of them. So that'll be 30 Watts. Uh, and you don't, um, want to necessarily put these things directly on the battery because they do create hot spots. So you want to get some sort of uh, way to diffuse that heat. I'm using an aluminum plate that I've already cut to size to fit here. This will actually be on the bottom, not the top of the battery. And then what I like to do is use these like felt pads, furniture feet pads. Uh, 
they will provide enough standoff from this plate on the bottom so that these pads don't get crushed by the weight of the battery. And this will also help cushion the battery. And, you know, I've about a total of 30 watts here, you know, for these pads. And um, what, what I like to do is, you know, wrap the battery in this, this dish foam, uh, you know, it's called other things in other places, but uh, it's really thin, so it doesn't have a lot of R value, but you wrap it a few times in this direction, a few times in that direction. And not only does it provide some insulation to keep the heat in, but it provides cushioning for the battery itself. Um, although the R value isn't all that high, uh, these batteries have a lot of thermal mass. So it's not like they're going to go straight to freezing on a cold night. So I, you know, I don't know, have exact numbers, but uh, if you start heating these things, turn these heaters on, maybe around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, what is that? Uh, you know, three or four Celsius, something like that. Um, it will get through the night. And then also uh, you've got air in here that's going, you know, when this lid is closed, that air will also act as a, some of an insulator and you're not moving the air. So, um, you know, you're retaining the heat a lot better than you think. So with that, uh, let's get started on uh, building this uh, diffuse, heat diffuser plate. Um, we're gonna talk, uh, clean it first, get rid of the oils, um, and then we're gonna start installing these felt feet and these pads, which conveniently have a 3M sticky side that will stand up to the heat. All right, see you in a few minutes.